Hi, I'm Paul Mannion. Welcome to New Hampshire Crossroads. Back before radio and television became such a large part of daily life, people would often gather in the town halls for dance. In New Hampshire, the style most favored was called contra dancing. This old and energetic form of dance almost became one of the lost arts, but it never quite died out. Now there are groups of enthusiasts all over the state. It's fun, it's good exercise, and it's a great way to keep warm on a cold winter's night. The lights are on and the band is tuned up. Let's go meet dance caller Mary DeRosier, fiddler Ryan Thompson, piano player Gordon Peary, and the contra dancers at the Town Hall in Nelson. The hall was built in 1787, and as far as I know, starting right at that time, people got in here and they danced, and they did many of the same dances then that we're doing now. But there's been dancing in this hall almost continuously since it was built, and there are very few other towns that that have carried the dancing on in that tradition. Contra dancing is a form of dance that was brought to this country from France uh, back shortly after the American Revolution by French dancing masters. Contra dance, the name means dancing in lines opposite each other. And it has evolved in New England to um, be sort of what you saw tonight, to be a combination of more stately figures and more rugged New England style figures, but all of the figures we do are originally from way before the American Revolution. It's a very, very old form of dancing. I started dancing, oh, let me see, about 12 years ago, went to my first contra dance, and I've been doing it ever since. Mm -hmm. I fell in love. I call usually once or twice a week in the wintertime, but in the summertime there are a lot of dances and weddings and we'll be, we could be working maybe three or four nights a week. You gauge your dances toward who's there and their abilities and what you think they're up for. If they're up for learning serious dancing and the history of the dance, that's fine. If they're just up for having a good time, you keep it fairly straightforward. current revival in contra dancing started, it kind of came out of the Nelson Town Hall. There were people in Nelson who remembered the old dances. There were musicians in Nelson who knew the old tunes, and so this became kind of a center for that. And in many ways it still is. You go in the hall and it's a it's a funky looking building. I mean, there's nothing that you would say, oh, this is beautiful, this is magnificent. Uh, architecturally, it's, it's certainly not unique, uh, maybe a bit odd. But there's a feeling here. Sometimes you can walk in and, and almost feel the magic of the place. I've seen callers from, from the West Coast and from uh, Southern Appalachia come up in here, and they know about the Nelson Town Hall. They've read about it when they've been studying about dancing and the, the history of dancing. And, and they come in here almost like their, their mecca. Is this your first dance? Yes, it is. What do you think of it? I love it. <laughs> I uh, heard all about it. I just moved to the area on Friday night. Saturday night? Yeah. And I heard all about it, so I had to come right out. Well, I, was, I heard somebody just mentioned that there was contra dancing in all the small towns, so I started asking around, and somebody where I work comes here all the time, so we came with her. <laughs> it's great. It's typical New England. It's a throwback to the old times. And Paul's Victory was written in, well, that was about the War of 1812. Uh, Chorus Jake and Money Must go back to even before that time. So some of the first dances that were taking place in this hall was the same music and the same choreography as we're doing now. Slightly different style both in the music and, and some of the instruments.
It's a real special dance for a lot of people. Musicians especially come for really miles, I mean literally 50 or 60 miles sometimes, to play two or three tunes here and to hear other musicians. A lot of times if you're a professional musician, I'm a professional musician, and oftentimes I'll come and I'll play at a dance for much less money than I would play for for a professional job because I enjoy it. I enjoy dance fiddling. Tonight was especially fun because there were a lot of people that I know here, people that I've played music with and, and callers that I've worked with over the past few years. It was particularly enjoyable. I've been playing music ever since I was a kid but I heard about uh, contra dances going on in San Diego and I grew up in San Diego and I thought what's this what's contra dancing all about I have to come and, and, and see what see what's going on and I went up there danced a few times and, and the music just sort of it sort of caught me up I got into the dances and I guess I danced for about a year or so and someone loaned me a fiddle and I really didn't know how to tune it even but I, someone showed me how to tune it up and uh, I sort of taught myself how to play by playing with the, uh, the dancers and the, and the musicians there at the dance in San Diego. Is that after playing for a few years there, I decided, well, I'm going to come to where the source of this music originated, and I'm going to move out to New Hampshire. So I had an opportunity to move out to New Hampshire, and I've been here for seven years now playing contra dance music, and of course all different types of music on the fiddle. The good mix is a combination of experienced musicians, an experienced energetic caller, and dancers that are having a good time. If the dancers are having a good time, the musicians are having a good time, and it sort of feeds on itself. The dancers are getting more excited, and they're moving a little faster, and a little more energy, and then the musicians get that spark, and then they pick up their pace a little bit, and a little more energy into their playing. And the caller, the caller, of course, is very important because the caller is the intermediary between the musicians and the dancers. And if the caller can pick up on this energy that's coming back and forth between the dancers and the musicians, that's when you get a real nice dance. The funnest thing for me is to hear the way the dance fits to the music. The, the greatest thrill about it for me, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it, I'd just be dancing, is standing between the fiddler and the dancers. And watching the dancers learn how to fit their movements to the music because in this the music is phrased just perfectly for these dances people learn to put their feet down to the music and people start absorbing the music into their bodies and moving with it and that's beautiful that is energizing a good example was tonight the dance tonight there was a lot of energy in the air the musicians were very good the dancers were good and everybody's having a real good time I think it's very, very important. I think it's a very important part of New England tradition and it's important, it's, it's an important thing for people to do, to mm -hmm. dance. Otherwise.